what we talked about now and between the push to talk and augmenting some of those things, I mean, it all becomes that bigger, the hybrid connected worker and what it all looks like, right? It's not just right. giving them a tablet or just giving them a phone, right? It's, it's the confluence of all these things together and what it connects. That was Matt Nelbone who is joining us for a series of videos on industrial hybrid work. This video is going to be about mobile apps for projects. Yeah, I mean, some of the biggest ones you'll see are going to be around the portfolio and project management. Uh, you know, those are the things that handle the actual business that they're working on. It could be a turnaround operation. It could be actually a construction project, uh, a large installation, you know, anything like that, right? That also would can include things like capital projects, right? So anything in that big project management bucket uh, that they're trying to track, that's one of the big ones that isn't necessarily currently big in the field, but there's a big value of of being able to provide that to those that are actively in the field. So they're not having to waste time to get updates on their project tasks, things of that nature. So being that, putting that in their hands is something that would be really beneficial. How would field workers do these types of tasks um, if they didn't have apps on mobile devices? Like how, yeah, I mean, how would, would that have been done? Yeah, so typically it'd be via a clipboard. It could be a push to talk radio. I'm done with my task. I need somebody to come inspect it. Um, walking back and forth from a work shed to their work area to either update a ticket or get a new ticket, right? So it's all that manual time, right? It's it's reducing or sorry, it's increasing time on tools, right? That's what it is, right? Re reducing lost time from those tasks, right? So right. when we're doing a work, oh, we have yeah. to have Good a point. hot work site permit, you know, things of that nature. So how long would it take for someone to check off on that task normally if they didn't have instantaneous access to work being completed or not instantaneous necessarily. Maybe it's just timely information that tasks have been completed so they can get those inspections and checkoffs done more quickly, return those permits. They can fire up things more quickly along the way. If, if you didn't have a, a mobile device that you could enter stuff into or look stuff up, actually walk, walk us through how a task would get done with and without a mobile device kind of Sure. Thing. I mean, in a, so in a super simplified way, think of something like, I, I have specific tasks that I have to go out and do as a worker. Once I go out, so I, I report in the morning, I get my task list or task, whichever one it is, depending on the complexity. Right. I go out across this, the facility. I perform that task. How quickly did I get that done? Did I get it checked off that it was done correctly? That's all manual. I go out and I do my work. I could radio and say, hey, I'm done with task 14. Somebody still has to go out there and inspect it. Depending on the application and the access to mobile data, it could be as simple as a picture. Right. Hey, this okay. is done. Enter the picture into the system. It now gets uploaded. Somebody else at the uh, operations center or wherever they might be could visually look at it and say, yep, that's done. Or a video, right? Maybe get all around all angles. You show it's working mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. That may be sufficient. Yeah, that, but that's... But that takes hours off of the task, you know, at hand if you yeah. don't have to send an inspector out, right? And, and if it's not something that requires a, oh, I don't know what the term would be, but a hard inspection that, oh, yes, it's done. We can move on to step B. I don't have to have somebody go out and physically verify the task. I don't have to have somebody go out and test for a leak or test for something like that that's critical. Right. That might be enough to move forward. And then you can have somebody go out and still do the checks while the process is continuing. Right. Okay. Yeah. But so stuff can have start happening in parallel if you know Correct. what else is going on. Okay. Right. Very cool. What kind of infrastructure do you need to actually make this work? Well, this is just foundational to all of it, right? So when we talk about okay, that's cool. wireless yeah. services, it could be Wi-Fi. There's no silver bullet wireless service, right? Let's talk about that first, right? There's not, yeah. hey, I'm going to implement Wi-Fi. And I'm going to take care of everything wireless in my plant. So that's one thing we need to make sure that we're communicating is that there's no silver bullet, but it can be based on a solid network and Wi-Fi and then augmenting that with other types of connectivity options, such as uh, Wi-Hart or ISA 100 or you know other options for wireless that connect multiple devices, but still using the Wi-Fi infrastructure for all that. Okay. 
And to that point is making sure we're not tying this all up with one use case, right? So being able to say, we can use this for our operations and, and maintenance planning with you know IBM Maximo, right? So we're getting our maintenance plans. We're being able to walk around and take care of things from, from that standpoint. But we're also going to leverage it using things like P6, or P6 in our project management software when those rounds come around. It's the same infrastructure providing the same types of connectivity, but for completely different groups of people and completely different applications. We can't allow us to just talk to the operations guys. We also have to try to get connected with the portfolio and project management people because there's a huge value to them and things like plant turnarounds, right? right. Um, a customer of ours had a one month long turnaround at $250 million. So if we could have one day shaved off that turnaround, it's still significant. So right. those individuals obviously can see some value in making these things better, but you, you know, you can't tell me next week that I have a turnaround in May. I can't help right. you, right? Because the engineering is done for all of this. All the parts and pieces have been configured. Everything is in motion already. Um, we have to know a year in advance, or we have to be yeah. able to coordinate some way that we can get there in enough advance that we can be of, of change, it, you know, right. to do that at once. But otherwise, it's what I said. Let's put an AP near a control room because all of the infrastructure is already there. Hang an AP outside of a control room somewhere. I just gave you, you know, 100 meters of connectivity. What can we do there, right? I can put an AP maybe in a warehouse out focused into the, the facility. There's another 100 meters of connectivity. Mm -hmm. What can we start seeing from a use case perspective that's going to make a difference there? And then just start building on them. So you mentioned uh, you mentioned Maximo. You mentioned some project management software. There's a few out there. Oracle P6. I think you mentioned at one point. Right. Um, any other uh, sort of big SAP? I guess is another yep. big ERP system that has a ton of modules. And you can do the whole Aviva, the OSI piece. I mean, there's tons of applications right. there. And then if yep. we extend into the upstream areas, you can throw in a lot of the Schlumberger applications, the Halliburton applications that may be desired to have a more mobile aspect. Um, but those being so much more spread out from an asset perspective, um, yes, they want access to it. They may be already doing that over something like a you know a 4G connection on their their cell phones, just standard right. care, right? And that would be a whole other conversation of what we can convert them to from that wireless aspect. Right. Yeah. Anything Anything else that you you, you kind of want to leave with people in terms of um, why this is important, why people need to be looking at it if they're not. Yeah, I mean, the thing is the value of your money in investing in these applications, right? What's the best use of them? Is the best use of them having 20 people having access to control room or being able to put things like Maximo anywhere in the hands of those that are walking around your plant, right? Because they have then immediate access to work orders, um, ticketing systems, reports of errors. I mean, anything that's going on from a maintenance aspect, people have instant access to it. You don't have to wait for that time delay for them to get on their bicycle and go back to the control center and talk to somebody. Or the, pu the push to talk aspect, which has worked for half a century, right? But again, it's the timeliness of the data and fully understanding the data and getting something clear and concise I can act on, right? It's making it actionable more quickly, not necessarily knowing right. about it, it's making it actionable more quickly. Right. Okay. No, that's a, a great differentiation because you can let people know about it over a push to talk, right? Absolutely. It's just not as actionable, right? Yeah, that's a great, great way to put it. Right. Like and the it. level of detail, like I said, some of that's lost. I mean, we've all played the telephone game, right? The guy in the control room told this other guy, he gets on the radio, tells the guy out in the thing, the guy out in the facility then goes and actually communicates with the person doing the work. How much of that has changed? Whereas the person at the control center could have just typed it all into a ticket or work order, or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Immediately in the hands of the person actually doing the, the job. That's excellent. Yeah, it's a, it, it really is a game changer and it doesn't have to like, it doesn't have to be a blanket, the whole facility. It can start with specific spots to, to really identify what the ROI could be and then expand it from there as, as it makes more sense. Probably the most extreme from a coverage would be the location tracking pieces that we talked about, right? Where um, if, if you're in a shutdown turnaround scenario and you really want to track the thousands of people that are on site, um, then you might want a much more dense coverage. And that's right. a bigger investment. 
But then if you do make your business case that way, then you layer on all of the other ones that we talked about when you get into the operations side of it. Right? Yeah. And, you know, it's I just thought of something else here as, as far as when you're talking about all the people and for a shutdown turnaround. The location services not only tells you where people are, when they're going things, but they can add, they can actually help you identify things like agitation zones. Right. I've got this narrow okay, area yeah. that I've got a ton of traffic through. Maybe I need to change my workflow. So that less people go through that area and go through this more open area because then it actually will improve safety. There's less collision app, you know, opportunity. Right. There's things like that that we can change just by seeing with that activity. Um, this is this has been a great conversation. Um, and uh, and I'd like to have you back for another conversation around uh, around the push to talk piece, because that piece has changed, too, over, yeah, over the last sure few has. years. And, and what we talked about now and between the push to talk and augmenting some of those things, I mean, it all becomes that bigger the hybrid connected worker and what it all looks like, right? It's not just right. giving them a tablet or just giving them a phone, right? It's it's the confluence of all these things together and what it can what it yeah. can give them. That's great. We'll have to have a follow up call on that. That's awesome. That was our conversation with Matt about the impact of apps and communications in the field. This is only one conversation in a whole series on industrial hybrid work. Click on the next video to watch more or look for another one in this series to learn more about industrial hybrid work. Thanks for joining us. If this was valuable, poke the like button or subscribe to stay connected. Take care.